What's going on YouTube? I've got something a little bit different planned for this week. Ever since I started making YouTube videos, it's been a little bit harder to get all of my knife orders out on time. So this week, I'm gonna bring you along for making three knives all at once instead of just one. And we might even get to do some destructive testing. Let's get to it. Well, I've got the first mistake of this build. I heat treated all of these knives without drilling any holes through the handles. So now that they're hardened, there's no way you're gonna drill through that. But I'll show you how to fix that. I'm gonna submerge the blades underwater and uh, heat up the handle with a torch. Uh, that'll soften the steel enough that I can drill through them and it won't affect the heat treat of the blades.
it's time for every knife maker's favorite part of knife making. I've got this uh, test knife put together that I heat treated with my other knives. I put an edge on it, it's got a duct tape handle. I'm going to do some tests and then eventually break the knife so I can look at what the, the grain structure of the steel looks like, see how our heat treat went. So let's get to it. All right, so the uh, paper cut test doesn't really tell us a whole lot about a, a knife's edge. It shows you that you're sort of sharp, but it's really easy to, to skew this test based on how you hold the paper, what kind of paper it is, how you hold your blade. Uh, so really the thing that I look for is just that I have a, a smooth edge, so the cut is smooth across the entire blade. Um, and it's really just more of checking my sharpening rather than anything else. You can see that the cut is clean and I pass through from the, be the base of the blade all the way up to the tip of the edge uh, and that gave us a pretty clean cut. Alright, so what we've got here is a piece of cherry wood I've got clamped to the bench. I'm going to use this other block to uh, baton this knife and maybe take about 10 cuts or so into the middle of this cherry wood. Cherry wood's pretty hard, uh, so we'll, we'll see what it does to the edge and how the knife folds up. I got down to the the base there and my blade is about the same thickness as the wood so I couldn't really baton it very well to get through that last little bit but man there is like literally no marking whatsoever on the blade definitely no like rolling or or chipping for sure so that that's a good sign so it looks uh looks pretty good from here all right, so this is the Christmas tin I used to uh, draw back the, the hardness and the tangs on all these knives. So I'm gonna repurpose the lid and I'm gonna stab into it a bunch of times. So it feels to my finger like I maybe lost a little bit of sharpness here. There's no rolling or anything like that. And there's a lot of, it looks like maybe just paint debris or whatever scraping off from, from the lid on the bevels of the knife. Um, the tip doesn't look like it, it lost any of the tip. It's still very sharp up there. Um, let me get a piece of paper. Yeah, so you can see when I hit right about here, I get a little bit of drag on the paper. So it looks like maybe I, I got just a little tiny bit of, of dulling that happened. So, I mean, I, I think I could probably just drop this a few times and it would probably bring the edge right back. Um, I don't think I would even need to sharpen anything. All right, we got another one. So this is some, I think it's quarter inch, maybe three eighths inch. Uh, copper tubing, hollow tubing. So I'm gonna baton this into this in a few different spots. Um, see how it goes. I don't see any chipping at all. I really can't even tell, tell that the blade, you know, hit anything. I'm not sure how well you guys can see this on camera, but I just wanted to give you a look at the, the edge of the blade. I haven't really done anything to this. I haven't stropped it or anything since doing all these tests. Well, the sad moment has come. It's time to break the knife.
three of these knives were forged from 5160 high carbon steel and have a single quarter inch stainless steel center handle pin and four two millimeter stainless steel pins on the ends. This handle is walnut with red G10 liners and the knife has a hand sewn leather sheath. This handle is maple with OD green G10 liners and has a molded kydex sheath. This handle is walnut with yellow G10 liners and has a kydex sheath. All right, that wraps up the build of these three four inch field knives. Let me know in the comments which one you think turned out the best. I had a ton of fun doing all the performance testing with this test blade. It was really informative to see exactly how this performed in different scenarios and even more so than that, snapping it in half and looking at the grain, uh, comparing it with all kinds of posts and pictures that I found online in different bladesmithing forums. Um, I think this grain structure looks phenomenal. I think it looks really good. Uh, so that's really encouraging to know that I think I have a, a very good heat treat and tempering process down for 5160. So it's definitely something that I want to explore and do some more elaborate testing with some of the other common seals that I use uh, just to make sure that I have a really good understanding of exactly what my knives can and can't do. As always, there are affiliate links to all kinds of materials in the video description if you're interested in making your own knife or you want to buy something that you saw in the video. Um, if you're interested in actually having a knife made, you can reach out on my website, davidmoonforge.com, or you can hit me up on Instagram. Thanks for watching and stick around to the end of the video. In my next video, I'm going to be making a skinning knife for a wildland firefighter in California.